Welcome back to another video and today I actually have an update to a video that I've already created which is importing and editing STL files in Fusion 360. Fusion have recently made a few changes as to how this works and they've also limited some of the features on the personal use license. So let's dive in and take a look. So we're in Fusion, we've got a fresh workspace and the first thing you're obviously going to want to do is come up to insert, come down to insert mesh. Find the directory for the file you want to import. I'm going to choose this CNC dust shoe that I designed for a previous project. If you want to check out that project, click the card above and you can have a look at it. So once we've imported it, you'll see the model in your workspace. Now you should see a menu here on the right. If you can't see it, it might be minimized. So you might see these two arrows here. Just click on that and the menu will pop up. First thing you're going to want to do is select your unit type. So whatever unit type you're using in your workspace, or if you know the original unit type that the model was designed in, you're going to want to select that. So I'm going to just choose millimeter because that's what I used. Now what I recommend you do is turn on the workspace origin by clicking the icon here in the top left. You'll be familiar with that where we have our different planes that we can sketch on. So what you used to have to do here is if you imported a model, you'd have to sort of manually drag it into place roughly where you thought the center was. But now they've actually added some tools here that you can automatically center it. Under this position tab here, there's center. So if we click on that, it snaps to the center. And there's also another one that is called move to ground. So if we change the perspective here, you can see that our ground plane in there is kind of somewhere in the middle, right? So if we hit move to ground, you will see what that will do is it'll place the model on that ground plane for us. And that's actually really handy sometimes when you want to make changes and edit these models. So now we're going to hit OK. We'll hide the origin because we don't need it now. And you should see your model in the workspace. Now, if we click the bodies drop down here on the left, you'll see that we've got this little yellow symbol. And that means we're working with a mesh body. And a mesh body isn't very useful in Fusion in terms of making changes. So what we're going to have to do is convert that. So as I said, there are kind of two ways you can do this. One you can do with the free version and one you can't. So what I'll do is I'll show you the free version method first and then I'll show you the other method afterwards. So for the free method, what you're going to have to do is click on this new mesh tab up here in the top left. Now I'll bring up a whole bunch of new tools for you. And what we're going to have to do is convert this from a mesh body to a regular solid body. So what we'll do is come up to modify and come down to convert mesh. Again, now I'll pop up a little menu here in the top right. We're going to select the body that we want to convert. I'm going to select this. We can choose an operation. We've got parametric and base feature. As it says there, parametric creates a feature in the timeline that maintains its upstream parametric relationships. And that basically means it'll create a feature on the timeline for you, and you'll be able to go back and make changes if you want to. If you'd rather not do that, and you just want to create something and you're happy with it straight away, you can click on base feature, and that also can help with memory and processing as well. I'm just going to choose parametric here for this example. And this next tool is where we come to the difference between the free license and the paid license. I'm on an education license, so I can show you both. So the difference is that we can choose a faceted method or a prismatic method. Now, I'm going to show you the faceted method, which is the method they allow you to do on a free license. So select that and then hit OK. Now what you'll see in our bodies folder is that we've got a solid body. And we can select faces and we could go ahead and change this if we wanted to. But notice our model kind of looks a bit messy, right? Because we imported an STL, it's basically made of triangles and we've got all these kind of jagged faces on curves. And even on flat surfaces, you can see some of these sort of annoying faces. And that can be frustrating when you want to sketch, because if we come back to solid and come to create sketch, if I wanted to sketch on a flat surface, I can't select the entire surface. I have to select these individual faces which is just annoying. So you are limited in terms of your clean up here on the free license, but what you can do, if you know you've got a flat surface and you want to clean it up, what you can actually do is just select any face on that flat surface and hit delete on the keyboard. And what that'll do is it'll clean that up for you so that you can select an entire flat face. So you can do this anywhere where you do have a flat face. So on here, for example, I can click, hit delete, cleans that right up. And again, we could do it on this one. You could do it underneath. So if I zoom in, hit delete, you can see how it just flattens that out. And the same on these edges. So basically anywhere you've got a flat face. It's a little bit of work, but again, here 
if you're willing to put the time in, you can clean it up quite a bit. And underneath as well, we can do the same for this one and the same for this one. And you can see it does clean it up. One thing I wouldn't do is go ahead and do that on the curves, obviously, because each of these individual faces makes up the curve. And just to show you, if you go ahead and delete one of those, you're actually changing the shape of the object. And you don't want to do that so i'm going to back that up so once you've been through that process you're now in a position where you can actually make changes to the model so for example on the bottom here if i wanted to extend this by say 10 millimeters i can hold control and click both of these faces and then if i come up to extrude i can just type 10 millimeters in there hit ok and i've automatically modified and extended this model same then goes for sketching if i wanted to sketch I can just click on any edge face that I want and I can go in, let's just add a hole for example, we'll make it 12 mil, hit OK. And if I then wanted to extrude or cut, I can select extend type to object and I could make a cut there through the model. So you can import models, you can edit them and you can use them just like you normally would with any other solid body. So now what I'll do is I'll show you the feature you can use in the paid version if you have it. So to do that, I'm just going to close this one out and we're not going to save it. I'm just going to insert a new mesh straight away. I'm going to import the same mesh and this time I'm going to run through the same thing. So I'm going to center it, move to ground, millimeters and hit OK. So once again, if we drop the bodies folder down, we're working with a mesh body. In order to use that prismatic approach, what we first have to do is come up to mesh. We have to first prepare the model. So if we go to prepare, and generate face groups. This is a new feature that Fusion have introduced that basically lets you smooth out the whole model, particularly on those curved areas, and it tries to accurately represent the original model that you import. So what we'll do is we'll select the body. We can select a type here as well, so you've got fast and accurate. Now, if you're importing a part that's for some kind of engineering project and you need accuracy, then obviously you'll want to select accurate here. The downside to that is that you'll have more faces and it may increase your processing time. If you printed something simple or something more cosmetic, you might want to go for fast. In this case, I'm going to choose accurate. I'm going to set the boundary tolerance to 0.001 mil and I'm going to hit OK. That may take a while depending on the complexity of the model, but when it's done, you'll see the generate face group feature added in the timeline below. So now that we've generated those face groups, we need to go up to modify come down to convert mesh and we're going to do the same thing we're going to select the body we'll set the operation to parametric here and now we're going to choose prismatic and if we click OK you'll see now the difference that that feature is introduced right before we had those kind of jagged faces and now we've got a really clean model that basically looks like we modeled it in Fusion 360. So that's it for this one I hope that's been useful it is a little frustrating that they've kind of put that feature behind a paywall. And if any of you are interested, you can do this in FreeCAD. And I've made a separate tutorial for that. So go check it out. If you appreciate these videos and you want to support me directly, head over to the website, become a member. You'll gain access to my course and a whole bunch of 3D models. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll leave links in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.